Hi, I'm Duncan. I'm an innovator. <laughs> Hi, Duncan. Hey, Duncan. Hey. Hey. Interaction, I like it. Uh, Hands to cold fat, though. Even worse than being an innovator, I'm a mushroom farmer. Wow. Oh, that's good. And thanks, thanks the uh, culinary group here for providing mushrooms. I hope everybody got mushrooms on the salad. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Every mushroom sold is a good mushroom, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, the mushroom industry, these are typical wild mushrooms from an old print. Uh, Agaricus bispor, or Agaricus compestus, would have been the wild one. Uh, we grow white grocery store mushrooms, brown grocery store mushrooms, known as Perinis, and big ones, known as portobellos. The industry is about 350 years old, uh, evolved in France, uh, went through sort of slow growth like everything else 350 years ago. Uh, got to a certain point in technology about 50 years ago in this country and stopped growing. Uh, reason for that is uh, many corporate mushroom farms fell into private ownership at that time at pennies on the dollar and mushroom farmers, uh, assistant managers, managers would buy out the corporate farms and were just happy. Didn't have much capital tied up. Said, okay, this is good. I can grow mushrooms for the rest of my life and I'll be happy. Well, as my beard got wider, their lives started running out. Uh, one of my associates went to a mushroom council meeting recently. He's 45 years old. And he says, gosh, I was the youngest guy there by 15 years. You know, all the mushroom farmers are old guys in this country, but not in the rest of the world. There they are, mushrooms, they're elegant. Mushrooms are not animals, they're not plants, they belong to their own kingdom uh, of mold. Mold, mildew, fungus. How about that? Uh, traditionally, mushroom farms in, in California, especially, wooden bins of, of, a, of a variety of sizes are filled with a composted material. Uh, the spores are planted into them. Uh, the, the trays, and the trays are from here to here, are picked up by forklift, moved around from place to place. The trays break at about 1% a year, so you're replacing... What is a break? The tray? What is a break? You said they break at about 1% a year? No, that's the actual breakage of the tray, sir. No. Thank you. The wooden, the wooden portion of the tray breaks. Right. Why do you move them around sometimes? Ah! <laughs> In the environment, wild mushrooms grow from... Uh, they're tertiary digesters. There is something else that happened before them, and the normal course is little grasses grow up, wither and die, leaves fall on top of them. Microbes come in and eat the plant material, the little dead grasses, convert the plant protein into animal protein in their bodies. Mold then comes in and eats the dead bacteria. Hmm. They're real happy. It's sort of the fuzzy stuff. You might kick over a board in your backyard or turn over a log in the woods, and you see this white fuzzy stuff. It's called mycelium. That's the happiest form for a, a mold. The world's largest organism is in the Blue Mountains of Oregon, and it's over seven acres and growing in some mushroom. It's a great big mold. And it's at the mycelial stage, and every once in a while it pops up a little fruiting body, which is what the mushrooms are. So, now you've got this fuzzy stuff. In the wild, winds will come along and a rain will come along. It's lifting off the leaves and covered over the grasses. The mold is, is exposed to the environment and it says, oh, darn, I'm going to die, and I'd rather reproduce first than not. Most of us would share that. If you're going to die, <laughs> reproducing is an okay thing. <laughs> the reproduction for a mushroom is that it knits together. It's called anastomosis. The, there's a differentiation from the mycelium to the fruiting body, and these are the fruiting bodies. So the little baby mushroom, little white spot there, once it gets to be that big, it will double in size every 24 hours. Hmm. We have a verb in our language called mushrooming. We all hope that our innovations are going to lead to a business that will mushroom like that. So these guys, this guy is about a day and a half younger than that guy. That's how much, how fast yeah. they grow. But it took weeks and weeks and weeks to get here. It takes, in a traditional mushroom farm like this, it takes about 35 days to make the straw that's inside here to the point where you can then pasteurize it, which takes another week, and then three weeks after you pasteurize it and plant it, you can then put the peat moss on top, which is what this dark material is, 
peat moss acts like a sponge on top to absorb moisture that the mushrooms can drink as they're growing. And then you can grow, you can start harvesting the mushrooms. You harvest one break of mushrooms, as it's sometimes referred to, is one picking of mushrooms. You pick them all off, and then another break of mushrooms comes, you pick them again. When I got in the mushroom business 100 years ago, uh, you pick six weeks of mushrooms, and you might get two and a half pounds per square foot. So each square foot, you have two and a half pounds of mushrooms in six picking. Currently, uh, the farm that I manage in, in Calusa, California, premier mushrooms, go out and buy, Rayleigh's has them. Everybody go to Rayleigh's and buy mushrooms there. Uh, we get six pounds per square foot in three weeks of picking. Hmm. So where this is 35 days of making compost, we make it nine to 12 days. We, don't, we lose half as much raw materials. We conserve half the raw materials that, was, that normally gets consumed by the flipping and wetting kind of compost making that gets done there. Uh, we use aerated floors to get this done. Since we're using microbes to digest the straw, how do you get the air into the microbes? Because eventually they're going to eat, breed all the air that could be in a pile of straw. Imagine you're in a pile of straw, eventually you're going to run out of air. Same thing happens with microbes. So it, traditionally it would be picked up with a, a bucket loader or some sort of equipment, turned over, it shortens up the straw, increases the density. Good news, bad news. At the end, we still want to be feeding oxygen into the compost so that the mushrooms can grow. If the straw is too dense, we don't get it. So we can blow air up into the floor, increase the amount of oxygen inside the developing compost uh, without having to shorten it. So we can conserve the raw materials, conserve the number of days that are, are required, uh, and get this, uh, even higher quality, more uniform pile of stuff that we're going to plant into. <clears throat> so that's an old style mushroom. Let's see my picture. <laughs> 